Hey there, I'm Drew Rice and welcome to the Engineering Success YouTube channel where each week I talk about different personal finance or career related topics. And if you're interested in that type of content, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about dividend investing. My last two videos have been about value investing and growth investing. And this is the third investment strategy that I wanna discuss with you today. Dividend investing has been very hot on YouTube recently because one, the passive income element of it, and two, because it's generally considered a more defensive play or recession-proof play. So it's very relevant given our current economy. So if you're not familiar with the term and you've never heard of a dividend before, this is basically where a company pays a reward as a percentage of its earnings to investors for just owning a stock. And they usually do this quarterly, which means that you'll get four payments throughout the year. And what's amazing about this is this is whether the stock goes up or down. There are some caveats and we're gonna go over those. However, as long as a company is still willing to pay a dividend, then you're gonna still get payouts. Whether the stock is depreciating in value or appreciating in value, it doesn't matter because you're getting paid to own it. And that's the beauty of dividend investing. And this makes it very attractive during a recession because when you're holding a stock that doesn't pay out dividends and you see it go down in value, you're gonna be much more likely to sell it if you're not getting a benefit. At least in my opinion, this is something that really makes it easier for me to hold on to stocks when I see them losing value. And I don't really worry too much about it because I know one that I bought the stock at a good value if I'm holding it, but then two, I'm still getting something for having that stock. And what's even better is when I get those dividends, I then just take those dividends and reinvest them, which then aids in the compound growth of it. And think of dividends almost like being a landlord. You're essentially collecting rent payments four times a year from the stocks that you own because you own an asset, this stock, just like a landlord owns a piece of property that is hopefully going to appreciate in value over time. You can't get that cash out in the case of a stock without selling it. But if you don't wanna sell a stock normally, you don't get any of the benefit of its growth until you finally you know, are able to sell it. But with a dividend stock, you're able to get some of that money back out to then reinvest or to keep. That's completely up to you. But I think it's a pretty good incentive for owning a stock. Now you're probably wondering, well, why would some companies do this and other companies not? So generally speaking, a company that is more growth oriented is going to be less likely to pay a dividend and companies that are more well established are gonna be more likely to pay a dividend. And that's because when a company turns a profit and has earnings, they're able to take those earnings after all of their operating expense, paying their employees and everything, they're able to take that money and either reinvest it back into the business, which is what a more growth oriented company is going to do. Or sometimes companies say, well, maybe it's gonna be more valuable for us to give this back as a dividend to investors because that will incentivize more people to invest in our company, which will then allow us to have more capital available because they don't see an effective way to spend that money in order to grow the company. That being said, the negative side of that is it means that they've usually you know, plateaued or at least are leveling off on their growth curve, which means that you're probably not going to have that stock appreciate as much in value. So you have to weigh out what's more important to you as an investor, those passive payments that you're getting in the form of dividends or long-term capital appreciation in the form of growth in that stock's value over time. And that's why a lot of the time growth investors and younger investors aren't as interested in dividends because they don't see the capital appreciation upside. But that being said, it makes the stocks much less volatile. So as people get older and they're wanting to, you know, lower their risk profile and in their investments, they tend to move more towards dividends. Another reason for this is that dividends tend to be small. You're talking usually around 4% is going to be a good dividend. And realistically, you're going to need a good amount of money that you're investing in order to notice a 4% annual payment. I mean, if you're thinking about this and you're only putting in $1,000, you're only getting 40 back for the entire year just from the dividend. And of course, there could be growth as well, but when you're looking at it like that, it doesn't really seem as attractive. So a lot of younger investors don't focus on dividends. That being said, I think that it's very important to include dividend investing as at least part of your portfolio, because what's really great about it is, especially if you start off with companies that are say low cost per share companies, you're getting a dividend and you're able to build position up in that company over time. You can then take the dividends you get, reinvest them back into that company and 
it just builds this nice snowball effect that makes it very easy to set yourself up for passive income years down the road. So it's a good way to start building a passive income stream. I personally like a mix of dividends, value, and growth stocks. And currently in my taxable brokerage accounts, I have about half of my stocks as dividend payers. And my plan is just to keep building onto that and have it set up where I'm getting just nice passive income checks from that. So then the question is, how do you find a good dividend stock? So I have three basic rules on how to find a good dividend stock. The first one is do not chase percentage yield. So as an example, the way dividends work is a company who says that they're going to pay a certain dollar amount for the year split over four separate payments. Then when you're researching stocks, you'll see the dividend expressed as a percentage. This is very important to understand because Generally speaking, if it's a normal equity and not a REIT, it's going to pay out around 4% in a dividend. If it's paying much more than that, you're going to want to look under the hood a little bit and understand why. The reason I say that is, as an example, if we have a $100 stock that is paying out a 4% dividend, then that means that it's paying $4 per year, right? Very easy to understand. Well, let's say I was looking at that company in January. And I see that in 4% and it's not that spicy. I, I want something a little bit better. Well, let's say the market goes down like it has. And let's say that stock has gone down all the way to $50. Well, when I go and look, that dividend percentage looks amazing because it's at 8%. That being said, 8% doesn't necessarily mean that it's good because we don't know, well, why did the company drop that much? If a company's value just cut in half like that, it's something you definitely want to be wary of. And so when you see dividends that have gone up a lot, oftentimes it means a company is in a bad situation. So you just want to make sure that you don't chase dividend yields. The second rule is to look for consistency. So the common term within the dividend investing community is dividend aristocrats. These are companies that have paid and grown their dividend for years and years. We're talking about upwards of 30 plus years with some companies like 3M, Johnson & Johnson, Waste Management, to name a few. It's very important to focus on the companies that have maintained or consistently grown their dividend over time because ideally the stock is going to go up over time. And as it goes up, you're going to want that stock to increase its dividend because Otherwise, you're getting a lower percentage payout as the stock grows. So that's why it's important to focus on that. And it also shows where a company's focus is. If a company is focused on growing that dividend over time, that's amazing because I could own it right now and the dividend could only be, you know, 2%, 4% at my current buy-in price. But if I own that stock for, say, 10 years, 10 years from now, I could be getting a dividend that is much higher of a percentage relative to my buy-in price. So that's another reason getting started early with dividends is very important. And then the third rule, which is the most important when it comes to looking for dividends, in my opinion, is looking at the dividend payout ratio. So basically what this is looking at is how much is the dividend paying out per share and dividing that by how much the stock has earned per share. So you're looking for what's the annual dividend payout divided by the EPS. That's going to give you your payout ratio. Ideally, you want this payout ratio to be around 70% or less. This is a rule of thumb, but basically you want them to have a cushion of, I'd say, 30% or more. So if their earnings decrease, they can still maintain paying that dividend out. This means that in a situation like right now where you have some companies that are cutting their dividends because they have too much debt and not enough cash flow right now, you know that your dividends are much more likely to be safe and not get cut, especially later on in life as you're more reliant on that passive income. And I'll put links in the description box below, but the best place to check this out is dividend.com. I have no affiliation with them, but it's the best free resource that I've found for looking up dividends. It'll show you the dividend payout. It'll show you the percentage. It'll show you the years that it's consistently grown. It's an amazing resource to have. Whenever I'm looking for dividend stocks, I'm always checking them there as well as at Seeking Alpha. Both of those are very valuable resources in my opinion. Now, one disclaimer I wanna make sure you understand is that dividends are not guaranteed. Like I just said, companies can cut their dividend if their cash flow dries up and they don't have the earnings to pay out to investors because they wanna you know, save the company before they continue bleeding out dividends. So. Keep that in mind. Don't think that, oh, well, I bought this in. That means I have a guaranteed return. Nothing is guaranteed. 
That's why it's very important to make sure that the payout ratio is low and that the company is going to be able to consistently pay and grow that dividend over time. And it's also why I like to see consistent dividend growth because even though that's again not a guarantee, it's a very comforting sign that a company is not going to cut their dividend when times get tough, especially if a company has grown their dividend for 30 years, they're probably not gonna cut that dividend because they've shown we're going to consistently do this through thick and thin, through times that are not good, times that are good, they're going to keep doing it. That's what I like to see in a dividend stock. Another great thing about dividends and about getting those dividend payments out rather than doing short-term stock trades is because dividends are taxed at a lower tax rate than your normal earned income or short-term capital gains. So you're gonna give way less of your gains away than you would if you were trying to do say short-term trades in the market by just getting that dividend payment and holding those stocks long-term. One exception to this when it comes to dividends is make sure that when you are looking at a dividend that it's for an equity or a stock and not for a REIT because if it's for a REIT then it will be taxed as regular earned income. REITs tend to have higher dividends than stocks but that's a completely different conversation and I'll definitely do a video on that in the future. Right now this is just about dividend stocks. I just want to make sure that everyone's on the same page and not confuse anyone. And some dividend stocks that I like and some that I currently have are 3M, Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, PACW, City, AT&T, Disney. Disney's one of my favorites because they have a lot of room to grow that stock long term. And so let me know if there are dividend stocks that you guys are buying or that you are wanting to buy whenever there's a little bit more of a dip again. I hope this has given you a better understanding of the basics of dividend investing so you can get started on building passive income through them. And in the comments below, let me know what dividend stocks you guys are buying, what dividend stocks you like, and I'll probably do a video on which dividend stocks that I've been buying and why I've been buying those specific dividend stocks in the short term future. And in the meantime, check in the description box below. If you haven't already, sign up with Webull. You get a free stock when you sign up. It's a great mobile stock trading platform. Robinhood is also very good. There's a link down below for it as well. Check them both out, see which one you like, get a free stock, and don't wait to start investing. If you found value in this, be sure to leave a like on the video. It definitely helps. And don't forget to share this with anyone that you think might be interested. And Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time.